Hello Taurus friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my video, Taurus August 2020 Astrology Must Knows. This month we have a lot to celebrate as we are phasing out of the most intense time of the year as far as that we've had so far because of those eclipses. Just to put it into perspective, we have six eclipses in this whole year of 2020, okay? And three of those eclipses, we don't always have six eclipses in a year, often we have four eclipses, okay? And every eclipse that occurs is this harbinger of change, radical change, major endings, major beginnings, and you know, it's just a, an intensifier for many people that changes the, the trajectory, the path of your life. And so every one that we have expands this, and three of the six of them were in June and July. So as we move into August, although there are chances for some of the news and some other things to develop from the eclipses that occurred, the heaviness, the emotional heaviness, the intensity is starting to die down now from those eclipses, and we're stepping into what we would find as our new normal. The vision I'm get, or the visual I'm giving for this month is to look up a baby giraffe being born. If you've seen this already, baby giraffes have to be able to walk really quickly because if there's a predator attack, they have to be able to run with their group. And so you see these, you know, very graceful beings going through this process of being born, starting to walk right away, which is crazy and finding their footing on those on those big strong legs, finding their footing. So this month is very much about that baby giraffe, you being the baby giraffe, finding your footing in your new normal from the personal eclipse changes and from the profound changes that the world is going through from this coming together of heavy karmic hitters like Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter in Capricorn, in the sky, this long-term theme throughout this year of major change. And if you want to see more about that, search for Annie Botticelli coronavirus and you'll see how this astrology explains the changing of the markets, the falling of the markets, the restructuring of the systems, the coronavirus and all of that. So, but however it is, this month is very much about finding the new normal and finding your solid footing again with the changes that have happened for you personally and all over. Okay, but there's a lot to celebrate in the way that most of the big shock waves, at least from the eclipses, are going to be over. Now, of course, we can have a personal shock wave of something happening in our personal chart at any time, and we can't tell that from the horoscopes. But from the general horoscopes, the odds are that most of the big news has come in, um, and a little bit of that may be delivered still. Some people may you know, get some powerful news in August that are eclipse related, but mostly it's just this moving forward with seeing how life is going to be now that the changes have come. So in that way, it's a great relief. It's also a great relief from the emotion. There are several layers of what has made June and July super emotional. Some of those emotions will be good emotions, and you know, um, nice things that you want, but a lot of them will just be a lot of excess emotion that is not what you're wanting to deal with. <laughs> you know, a little bit too much. Some of it's coming from the eclipses, some of it was coming from one of the eclipses being in a water sign. Also, Mercury was in retrograde and it was retrograde in a water sign. So we've had this excess of water energy, and as the month moves on, we're getting out of that. So it's going to be a lot easier to see clearly what to do. Now, something else to celebrate is that Mercury retrograde that was interfering with pl making plans and you know contracts and you know bringing confusion. Um, that's not going to be present anymore. And Venus retrograde that was this theme for so long is also not going to be present anymore. So the post transit for the retrograde shadow periods after you know Venus, which Venus went direct at the end of June, but the, the post transit um, shadow period lasted till the end of July. So here we are now into August, we don't have to worry about that, okay? So making decisions about the things that came up from the eclipses and the retrogrades may be exactly what it is time to do. I still like the dates July 22nd through July 28th. If you watch my July report, then you know I'm all about those dates. And even though we're talking about August here, I do post these early for the purpose of, in case there's information you need to know, like what I like better as far as dates. So even though August is more clear from any of those retrograde mischief, pieces, we are going deeper and deeper into Mars retrograde every day into August, and Mars goes retrograde the second week of September into the middle of November, and that's its own other animal that we'll talk about. 
but your momentum will likely probably be strong still at the beginning of August, but the aspects for August have more than double challenging ones compared to sweet ones. Okay, so that's a little um, challenging point here in the midst of all this celebration. So knowing this, I still like July 22nd through the 28th for making these big decisions because there's just a, a week of clarity and of momentum and of, you know, nice aspects where um, it's just things are likely to flow better. And now as we move into August, we have a bunch of what's called a quincunx angle, which is as awkward as it sounds. It's like ships passing in the night, things not connecting where they're supposed to be. And um, so, you know, you're going to have the drive from Mars be pretty strong because Mars is moving through Aries, which is the sign that it rules. And so the momentum starting from the beginning of July is going to start building, but as of the beginning of August, you still have some energy to push things through, but people tend to get lazy and momentum tends to wane or other obstacles to pushing things through either internally or externally tend to come up from Mars retrograde. And Mars retrograde can be super fun as long as you know what's going on and as long as you know how to use the energy. Ma, you know, t Taurus energies tend to have a lot of ambition, a lot of drive. They want to push through and get things done and be productive. Mars rules that energy as well, where it's like forward movement. But as Mars goes into retrograde, and it's particularly with certain aspects we have this month, which I'll talk about, there are going to be some obstructions to moving forward. So you want to kind of time, like really jump on, it's like surfing, you know, following these astrological rhythms or is like surfing where you have to wait a little while, wait a little while sometimes to find the perfect wave and then hit it at the perfect time. And then you flow beautifully right back to shore, right? So it's, it's, that's what we're doing here. So you've got to feel your way through this to carry enough of the, uh, the, the ambition and the movement while before Mars starts to get into its retrograde because if you continue pushing when it starts getting into where it's getting frustrating because you're trying to push and it's not working, that's when you can have a not great Mars retrograde because you're trying to force against the rhythms. Okay, so if you can plan your vacations, plan your staycations, plan your um, you know, times to not have extra projects during the Mars retrograde cycle, so that's for the rest of the year, pretty much getting deeper into August and the rest of the year, then it will be easier for you. So if you've got to push something through, you might want to do it at this time. But if what you're pushing through requires momentum to continue and requires you to keep up a certain level of new extra energy now that you've pushed it through, seriously, think, consider it. Because as, you're, as the momentum wanes and your drive wanes, if you have to keep up a certain level, it's more likely to fizzle out. All right, so these are just things to consider. Okay, so something specifically for Taurus um, to talk about has to do with your finances. And this has to do with Venus moving through your house of money and transiting North Node moving through your house of money. So this, um, the, the North Node is our areas of highest expression this lifetime. When we look at it in the natal chart, it shows you your Dharma, your purpose, the things you're here to experience in your best flow. When we look at the transiting North Node, so that's it in transit, it has to do with finding keys to your personal Dharmic path. And for Tauruses, this is going to be very much about getting your financial self-sufficiency intact, finding the balance of your luxury material things and your simplicity, and in places where things have become less simple because they've been more luxurious, or in places where they've been so simple and basic that you really want more luxury, you know, this, this um, spectrum is what's being worked with as far as what your heart is calling out for. Okay, so this month you have a chance to have a financial boost because of what Venus is doing. It's making a conjunction with this North Node in your money house, and this is true for all Taurus placements, early, middle, and late. So that's exciting. And it's also this longer term theme from now into the beginning of 2022 of finding pieces of your Dharmic path that have to do with the second house. And you can explore the second house in more detail. Just look up what the second house represents in astrology. I'll give you a few other pieces here. But it has to do with making things with your hands. So if you have this passion or this drive to start making things with your hands, to garden, 
to you know live more simply or again like step into more luxury it's it's in this um you know or eco-friendly things living in sync with the earth things like that may actually directly link in to your personal highest expression in your dharmic path in this lifetime and over the next year and a half there are going to be pieces that you can move forward here and right now there's something specific about money with it and there's also something specific about love. So a love partner could facilitate this for you or may have pieces for you, um, or you may have to spend some money to, to try to um, you know, get some of these things figured out. And another key may come through education. Education is going to factor very heavily with the transit of the North Node through Gemini because Gemini is one of the rulers of education. It also has to do with writing teaching and learning and editing and writing and publishing and things like that. So if you have any of those things that are on like whispering to you from the universe and it's getting louder, you may see that these themes are continuing to strengthen, especially since May. May is when it started to really accentuate this um, configuration more and it will be there for all of this time until the beginning of 2022. Okay, so now we have to talk about, so we've, t we've talked about a lot of things to celebrate here and there are some more things to celebrate, but we have to talk about some things to really look out for. I'm an optimist. If you've watched my work for a while, you know that I love to reframe even the challenging things to help you be the alchemist and to step into your, um, you know, your your superhero mode and to use the challenges that come in order to just move everything along for you in positive ways. But if there's something nasty and scary and dangerous, I'm going to tell you about it, okay? And that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm going to show you a visual of this. Okay, so I'm using the early degree chart, but what I'm talking about is true for everyone, every Taurus placement, but let's just kind of get a handle on early, middle, and late degree placements so that when I differentiate out some things for some of you, you'll know where you are. So early degree placements are basically the April born or zero to nine degrees. If you're watching for your moon or rising, this report is equally for you as for the sun placements. Middle degree placements are basically May 1st through 10th or 10 to 19 degrees, and late degree placements basically May 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. Okay, but again, I'm using the early degree chart, but don't let that confuse you. What I'm talking about is true for all Taurus placements unless I otherwise tell you. So here's where the mischief comes in. All right, well, actually, do you wanna just quick have a quick visual on the, on the things we spoke about already? Transiting North Node here, it's going to be moving through this second house. That's true for early, middle, and late degree placements. You can see there it is for early, there it is for middle, there it is for late. Okay, so it's the same regardless. And you can see that Venus is um, right there. Okay, so we talked about the conjunction. So that's what it looks like it's gonna to come together. Also, Venus is transiting through your second house and that is true for all placements as we saw Venus was there. Um, so more harmony, something involving your relationships, you know, design projects, things like that and your money all kind of coming together and it could give you a boost to income or it could give you a boost to make a purchase for something, a luxury item. This is a pretty good month for that, by the way. Um, but I still like around July 22nd through 28th for big decisions because um, of these dicey aspects throughout the month. So we've got, all right, so the first crunkily thing to look at is that we have more than twice the challenging aspects this month as we do the sweet ones, okay? So that's gonna show up. But the thing to know about this is that these aspects are not like these long retrogrades, these powerful eclipses, you know, that kind of these long-term themes. These are like, oh, it's a rough day for a couple of days when the transit hits in a certain way, and then it passes, right? So there is a light at the end of the, the, the tunnel of these annoying aspects is that they're there and you'll feel them and it will be awkward. This month will be awkward because of that. But they're the types of things that pass quickly, okay? If it's something that's not passing quickly, it doesn't have to do with these aspects. It has to do with something else drilling down deeper into your personal chart, okay? These are just things that kind of are there, they're annoying, they're stressful, then they pass. The second thing is about this. Bom, bom, bom. Okay, so Pluto and Saturn. Okay, when I referred to these things happening in the outer worlds here in Capricorn, that's bringing so much change to the planet, that's this, this massive thing going on here. So what's gonna happen this month is Mars is going to make a square with Saturn and Pluto. That happens on the 13th and the 24th respectively. I often see five days beforehand and afterhand for Mars aspects. So we'll say August 8th through August 29th, which is all of the month except around the first week, 
it's fair game for the god of war, Mars, to come into contact with the stern authority, hardship, difficult planet of discipline, and the planet of birth, death, transformation, and rebirth, in, an, in a challenging angle, and it can be actually dangerous, okay? Most people are not going to have something dangerous happen to them. They're gonna be safe, you're gonna get through, you know, mostly everyone is not going to have something violent or dangerous happen to them or an accident. But because it increases the odds of violent things um, and accidents and something happening to your physicality as far as like this powerful boom, you really want to be extra careful. Okay, so here are some must knows for these aspects. The first must know is to not antagonize a crazy person or a person that's on edge. If somebody is on edge and they're tailgating you, this is just an example of the energy and you can apply this to the many ways it will show up in the, in, you know, in the month. Someone's tailgating you because they're so aggressive or whatever, that's their deal. And you might tap on the brakes to annoy them or you might slow down to annoy them. Um, this isn't the time to do that because the odds that they will just hit you or sideswipe you or do something worse or stalk you are increased because people are going to be on edge because Mars is in Aries, is extra aggressive. It's starting to get into retrograde, which means that the forward movement, which I like to use the car as this example because the people who are aggressive, like they just want to drive their car, right? So they start acting aggressively. They want the flow to go this way, but it's starting to turn in this way and they're angry about it and frustrated about it. And that can cause the violence, especially when in these angles. This can also cause problems like heart attacks or stuff from the stress of the aggression of not having good stress management. So, and if you have an issue with stress management, I would start working on that beforehand. Again, which is why I give these to you so early so that you can really, um, do something, understand the energies. And if you know you specifically have some weak links in these areas, you can start to work on it beforehand. You can start doing meditation. You can start doing EFT tapping. You can start getting therapy. You can start, you know, a gym membership. If you could even go in public or getting a gym machine at your house or whatever to start to change how you process the stress and to be extra aware. If you have to bring up a subject, it's another must know. If you have to bring up a subject that is Eh, edgy it may not go well this is not the time to do it unless you absolutely have to especially if it could have a dangerous or catastrophic outcome because of the chance for something small to turn into it's like a powder keg type of energy where it just needs the slightest spark and then it goes boom all right so if you need energy to break out of a matrix that has been holding you back, then this is amazing. The way that that matrix breaking is going to look is not going to be easy or graceful because of the nature of the angle. But like, let's say you have to leave a relationship and let's say you're sure that by leaving this relationship, you're, you're not, you're going to be safe and that, you know, the person you're leaving isn't going to turn dangerous or anything like, like you're certain that it's safe. And just the boom is like the argument or the difficulties or the backlash. You know, this is the time where people are going to crack out of something that has been difficult. But you, you know, if you're not in a safe space now and you're in a, in a dangerous situation, you wanna get out of that situation before this happens and make sure that you're safe when this goes down. Okay, uh, let's see what I wanted to say about that. Be extra careful driving, be extra careful walking, be extra careful doing anything with physicality, you know, no walk under ladders or like, you know, just things where you have your wits about you. So another must know about this is that the static that comes from thinking too much or the phone or texting or all of these different things, if you can shut some of that off this month, then you're more likely to hear the intuition or hear the guidance or think of the logic that would steer you around a potential problem. And I know that there are gonna be many of you having heard this and knowing this that will steer around something that now becomes a near, a near miss, a close call, and, and wasn't really you know, a problem, but you like kind of used your consciousness to steer around it. Anything that's destined to happen is gonna happen. We can't, you know, only the benevolent creator, creatrix is going to be able to decide the ultimate situation here, right? But there is a gray area, I believe, where we can, with our consciousness and our awareness, steer around unnecessary um, manifestations of these aspects. 
Okay, so that is, those are just the yucky things. <laughs> so one more yummy thing, I promised that there was more sweet stuff, even though we have quite a bit of sweet stuff this month already, that there are some nice angles, the 27th and the 29th. One of them particularly is involved with Jupiter and Mercury is going to come all the way over here and get into this nice angle. So because Jupiter is in this general area where the ruckuses are going to be, that gives this potential storyline of something coming up, coming to light, coming to a head, and then this sweet aspect coming in, mopping up cleanup, you know, and bringing some sweet um, resolutions to the conflicts that occurred. All right, so just kind of remember, you may have that to look forward to if these things come up. And in general, you might notice that if you do something with the energy that comes rather than just letting it all happen and watching it all unfold, like inner work, like healing, like you know, working on the root cause, that you may have a sweeter outcome after you get to this sweet aspect, okay? So, um, that that could be a nice saving grace so we'll call it like the potential for the rainbow or as the pot of gold after the storm of these other aspects but in general this month i think that you can be very productive i think it might be one of your last super productive months as far as pushing some things through in more of a, a powerful push but mars retrograde can actually be productive in a more quiet going with the flow type of way, not in like a singular focus, I'm doing this, this is where I'm going, I'm accomplishing this, I'm pushing. So if you find yourself starting to get lazy, just let it be. You know, if you, you do the bare minimum and just let the laziness kind of take over, get a relaxation, you know, um, effect from this, let it be that way and let it help you work smarter. That's something that I love Mars Retrograde for is that instead of just working harder as Tauruses tend to do, this whole transit for the rest of the year into the beginning of 2021 can teach you how to have spirits to-do list. That's the first must know, spirits to-do list. And the second must know is, you know, your um, like a, a streamlined approach that could also involve delegating, all right? so. If you can let your to-do list start to dissolve away and ask for spiritual guidance to come in about what you're really supposed to be doing and then taking actions on those things in a way as long as they're flowing and then pulling back when it starts to push back on you, then it can be a really enjoyable, um, quite amazing Mars retrograde. So I highly recommend that you look at my resources on Mars retrograde. I have so many resources for you beyond just these videos. If you click under this video and the little arrow button that says more, you will reveal all of these links, including my Mars Retrograde video and blog, or you can search for Annie Botticelli Mars Retrograde in a, any search and you will find my resources. Highly recommend you watch those, as well as a, um, a blog, if you search for Annie Botticelli, I don't think I have this linked underneath, Maximizing uh, Personal Planet Retrogrades. Then I have a really great kind of to-do list of what you can do during these retrogrades that we still have strong for the rest of the year um, and just have an easier time of it, you know, to, to kind of go with the flow and align with the natural rhythms of the universe, which is what my new book, Planetology, is about, which is um, available for pre-order now. And, you know, it's just how you can sync up with the, with the natural rhythms of the universe. That's what all my work is about. You can also find written horoscopes by me which are much simpler than these very in-depth in um, videos at cozybysweetstarlight.com, which is again in the notes underneath this video. You can also see, it's a beautiful site full of healthy lifestyle um, blogs and also astrology for wellness and ways you can apply astrology to through different areas of your life in ways you might not think of. If you want to have more blogs and if you want to have a write-up of all the salty aspects and all the sweet aspects of the month and what they are and what you can expect from them delivered into your inbox one month early, you can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. You'll also get my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine for free when you do that. And um, that will give you all kinds of ways that you can do your inner work. Again, that's free. And if you wanna take free classes, you can go to my school, Luminous Life Multiversity, at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. 
loom being the light. I call it living, living the loom life. I also have some paid courses at my school, including becoming a professional astrologer mastery course. So if you love how I teach and you want to learn either for your personal or professional development, you will love this course. It is crazy comprehensive. If you think I put a lot of energy into these videos and my other resources, you will be blown away by everything that's in that course. So you can see that at loomlife.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.